So it's out, DJI's first big dip into the world of FPV. Finally, we're getting official specs and a proper look at what you're gonna get for all that money. Introducing DJI FPV. The world's first ready to fly FPV drone that lets users of any skill level feel the thrill of immersive flight. Hello, I'm Ian and I play with drones and today DJI launched their first fully functioning, ready to fly out of the box FPV model with promises that it will appeal to both beginners and advanced pilots alike. So at a whopping £1,250 or $1,300 for the combo package, which still only gives you just one battery this time, who is this model actually aimed at? Well, I'm guessing people like me, who've been flying normal GPS gimbal stabilised drones for a few years love the cinematic pictures and video that they produce, but ultimately fly for the video and pictures it produces and not necessarily for the fun of actually flying. And that to me is the key thing here. Despite owning more drones than surely can be healthy, I rarely just fly for the fun of flying. Sure, I fly all the time to learn about new functions, to test them out and of course to make YouTube videos, but flying just for fun without recording or taking pictures, I don't do that that often. So this is where I think the key difference of FPV lies because instead of just watching the little machine buzz up in the air and seeing its view from a little phone stuck on a remote, FPV is going to give you that true first person view and you are finally going to get that immersed all surrounding view feeling of actually flying. Anyway, that's the intention. Let's get down to what you actually get for your money. Uh, it is a chunky little beast, 800 grams or just under two pounds which is more than twice the weight of most FPV drones and only just a little bit lighter than the very chunky Mavic 2 Pro. So it is a major bit of kit. For me, camera is still key though, as I've got no doubt I will still wanting to be recording a lot of what I actually do with this drone. So the camera is a 12 megapixel half inch sensor recording at 4K at 60 frames per second with a very impressive bit rate of 120 megabits per second. It also shoots at 120 frames per second if you're in uh, 1080. So that will give you super, super slow-mos. And all of this with a very super wide angle, uh, 150, 150 degrees field of view. It's mounted on a single vertical axis gimbal with electronic stabilization similar to the Osmo Action, which does a mighty fine job of keeping things stable. So I've got high hopes for this. The camera is clearly all about video though, shooting in both um, normal and D-cine like. Uh, with stills just given a cursory glance. They only take, uh, they're only taken in JPEG, uh, no RAW, but I guess if you want decent stills, then you're gonna get the Air 2 or the Air 2 Pro. The build is nothing like the Mavic range of folding arm drones, and it's built way more solid, presumably in anticipation of crashing being way more likely, I guess. It's supposedly designed to be easy to replace broken parts, including the landing gear, the top shell, the gimbal, and of course the props itself. Even so, I kind of have to wonder just how well it's going to handle hitting a tree or something at speed. And on that, this is a completely different kettle of fish speed-wise. The top speed of the Nippy Air 2 is 42 miles an hour or 90 meters per second. The new DJI FPV more than doubles that with a seemingly crazy top speed of 87 miles an hour or 140 kilometers an hour. When I read those specs, I did raise uh, the odd eyebrow, but look, FPVs are a faster type of drone, and this top speed is only available in the advanced fully manual mode designed for experienced FPV flyers. FPV novices uh, will start out in normal mode, which gives you forward obstacle avoidance sensors at a much lower but still nippy top speed of, um, of 35 miles per hour. Sports mode takes that top speed up to 60 miles per hour, and you lose the obstacle avoidance, and then the unforgivingly brutal manual mode takes away all assistance and lets you hit that crazy top speed of 87 miles per hour. I have to say this is one drone uh, you want to be flying well away from people. Uh, 0.8 of a kilogram or two pounds of metal hitting somebody at almost 90 miles an hour will not be good and could easily be fatal to be honest and that's another part of uh, what this model is aimed at. You need access to wide open countryside where no one is walking if you're going to be flying down at low levels. So what else do you get for your money? Well, all this speed needs a lot of power and power needs a lot of battery. 
So the FPV comes with a mighty large battery that the specs claim will give you around 20 minutes actual, um, 20 minutes flight time. But in practice, that's only gonna, you're only gonna get about 15 minutes max. But that is still way better than most FPV models that normally only give you about three to eight minutes of flying time. I must admit though, I'm still a bit miffed at only getting one battery supplied with a combo. For this model, I'm guessing combo means drone plus remote plus goggles. And of course, the biggest feature about FPV is the goggles you get. And this is why the cost of this drone is so high. The goggles alone sell for £525 or $570, and with good reason. They provide two two-inch high-resolution screens to provide your total immersion into the true pilot's view of flying. They use 5.8 gigahertz transmission and they have latency of just three hundredths of a second. And whilst you don't have a phone for flying, you can also attach one for a friend to watch the action alongside you. The remote is also different to the traditional DJI remote. It's not designed to have a phone. There are some familiar buttons along the back, but it will be a very different feel. And to get a completely different feel, you can also order a joystick motion controller, allowing you to control the drone with hand movements instead of uh, the actual uh, normal joysticks. This will be a completely different kind of control for DJI drones. I have ordered one as I think this may well be way more fun and possibly a more precise way to control things when you're flying. So there you go, completely different branch of drone for DJI, one that probably won't satisfy the hardcore FPV flyers out there, but hopefully one that will offer a whole new experience to people like me, who love cinematic drones like these, but are still looking for something new to try. Hopefully mine is gonna be here in the next few days, and you will be able to see for yourself how I get on as I upload videos. So, um, as ever, hit the little bell, get notified when I put another video up. Let me know below on your thoughts on this. I'm really interested to see, to read what your thoughts are and whether or not you think you're, you're thinking of getting one. I saw the um, stock levels on Heliguy go down by around 100 in the space of just four hours today. So I'm guessing it's gonna be a fairly popular little drone. Either way, until next time, stay safe and sane, have fun, happy flying. The new DJI O3 transmission system delivers crystal clear, hyper immersive image quality with ultra low latency. DJI FPV also features a robust modular design. The fully integrated camera records every breathtaking move in crisp detail, putting you right in the middle of the scene, thanks to a super wide 150 degree FOV. Footage stays super smooth, thanks to integrated rock steady technology. This is DJI FPV.